Okay, uh, hello. Um, thank you for joining us today. I'm Yuri Ogiso from Shona IPAC. And this, this is the first joint event of Nordic Innovation House Tokyo, Takeda Nordic Innovation Hub, and Shona IPAC. And today, each organization will give a quick introduction, and then four innovative startups from Finland and Sweden will give a pitch. We hope this event helps promote collaboration between Nordic startups and Japanese companies. And just a quick um, announcement about the logistics. After each pitch presentation, we'll have a few minutes Q&A session. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to post uh, your question in the Q&A chat during or after the presentation. And also, please keep your microphone and camera off during the webinar. OK, uh, to give the first opening remarks, I'd like to introduce Toshio Fujimoto, General Manager of Shona IPAC. Uh, Fujimoto-san, uh, can you please uh, start your presentation? OK, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Kazama-san, uh, slide on. Thank you. OK, let me start. And welcome, and thanks for joining IPARC event virtually. Uh, Shonan IPARC is a place for open innovation. I'm Toshio Fujimoto, General Manager of Shonan IPARC, and I will introduce you briefly about our attractive center of innovation. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, Shonan IPARC opened uh, two years ago, 2018. And after two years, now over 100 companies and groups are gathering at IPARC. There are a variety of companies from small startups to big pharma companies, IT companies, medical device companies, universities, venture capitals, and even local government. More than 2,000 talents are gathering here to form a big science community here at IPARC. So next slide, please. Yes. So at IPARC, uh, we are seeing the power of co-location. In the first year, please uh, look at the uh, right figures. Uh, in the first year, there are only a dozen of partnerships uh, made between tenant companies. But now about 150 partnerships and collaborations were made among tenant companies, which was 10 times increase from the previous year. Co-location actually works. But now due to this pandemic, uh, we are changing our events and meetings in a virtual way. Uh, we newly established a virtual matching system for tenant and member companies to search for potential partners and schedule a meeting 24 seven. So today we are happy to collaborate with Nordic Innovation House and Takeda Nordic Innovation Hub for this virtual event and you will meet with many attractive startups in Nordic countries. I hope to see a new collaboration starting from here, from this event. Thank you. Thank you, Hajimoto-san. And then um, I'd also like to introduce uh, Ms. Sanna Benetobara. Uh, she is the head of uh, Takeda Nordic Innovation Hub. Sanna? Yes, thank you. So my name is Sanna Benetwara and I'm the head of Center of Excellence for Innovation and Evidence Generation in the Nordics in Takeda. And it is truly a great honor to be part of this organizing uh, task force in this uh, Japan Nordic Health Tech uh, event. And as you probably know, Takeda is a global company coming from Japan, but we truly believe in understanding also the local strengths and being actually strong in our key where we are where we are present uh, in our philosophy we always put the patient in the center of uh, everything we do and have the uh, goal to support patients well-being in a holistic manner uh, and health tech especially of course AI and digital health are strategic priorities for the global Takeda and uh, to this end we have actually established uh, roughly a year ago this Nordic innovation hub to pilot really this new beyond the field concepts and to scale globally afterwards. So in our Nordic Innovation Hub, we are working on a large scale of this beyond the field solutions in all of our key therapeutic areas across all the four Nordic countries. And not only are we working for the Nordics, but also serving as a test bed for, for other regions in Takeda 
to scale up our solutions uh, later on. So we are working closely with the large uh, scale of uh, both internal and external stakeholders in order to be able to create these winning edge solutions, uh, digital solutions for our patients. And for our health tech efforts, the concept of this partner-driven innovation is really a key central thing. We want to co-create with leading innovators, but also we want to play a role in fostering global innovation community and collaboration. So as a Nordic part of this uh, Japanese company, it is really an honor for us to bring today together the leading edge health tech from Japan and Scandinavia. So looking forward for the, for the presentations here today. Thank you. Thank you, Sanna. And uh, lastly, I'd like to introduce Mr. Nicholas Carbonen. Uh, he's the community director of Nordic Innovation House Tokyo. Nicholas? Yes, uh, thank you so much, Yuri, for the kind introduction. And hello to everyone from my behalf as well. I'm Nikos Karunen, the Community Director at Nordic Innovation House Tokyo. And I will be uh, your MC for the second half um, of today's um, event. Uh, but first, uh, let me briefly um, introduce you the Nordic um, Innovation House here in Tokyo. So we are a truly a pan-Nordic collaboration project, meaning that the countries of Finland, Sweden, Norway, Iceland, and Denmark are part of the Nordic Innovation House here in Tokyo. And uh, besides our location here, we're also present in Silicon Valley, where it all started from, as well as New York, Singapore, and Hong Kong. And we are supported by Nordic Innovation. All of our five locations across the world um, serve the same mission, which is to scale the best of the Nordics. So we work together with quality Nordic startups, scale-ups and growth companies uh, within the global hubspots uh, where we operate as a community platform, as a stepping board uh, to these hubspots. And just to reiterate on that pan-Nordic matter, this is the board here in uh, Tokyo which is represented by the trade pro promotion organization of the five uh, Nordic countries. Because we have both Japanese and Nordic audience, I will very briefly give some insights from both of the ecosystems uh, for these audiences. Uh, we are very proud of the around 23 unicorns that we have from the Nordic countries. We see that we have strengths in areas where Japan is looking for innovations, uh, one of which is, of course, health technologies, um, hence uh, today's event. And uh, we're also very happy to see uh, that investments uh, from Japan to the Nordic startups have been uh, increasing. And we had around 17 cases last year. And even during the COVID times, uh, we've also seen uh, investment traction uh, between our countries. From the Japanese side, we're really happy to see that investments are indeed growing uh, on a yearly uh, basis since 2012. Uh, some of the main cities, not just Tokyo, there are also other main startup cities in Japan as well, and some big events coming up. Um, and some of the fields that Japanese large corporations are looking for open innovation and collaboration um, opportunities include deep tech, um, such as batteries, VR, AR, mobility, wearable, uh, but also increasingly and especially accelerated in this year of uh, digital health uh, is also an opportunity uh, that we have recognized here in in Japan. A few words about the Nordic Innovation House. So we are a platform for companies in scale and growth uh, who are technology intense, uh, have registered in the Nordic uh, countries and have a very keen interest to explore uh, the Japanese markets. I will not go through all of the details of our membership. You can find all of this information online, but basically uh, we give access to different networks. Uh, we support as a Nordic front also access to communities and some visibility and showcasing opportunities, uh, such as the one uh, that we are conducting today uh, together um, with our partners. And uh, we're also very happy to, to partner with other types of organizations. So if you're interested in the Nordic startup ecosystem, or if you're a Nordic organization who wants to know what is happening here in Japan, uh, feel free to reach out. And I would also like to take this opportunity to introduce already our next event, which will happen next week uh, together with Japan External Trade Organization, uh, JETRO, where we will uh, introduce Nordic digital transformation companies, uh, one of which also touches on telehealth as well. Uh, this is my contact information. Uh, thank you again so much uh, for uh, joining and tuning in. 
I'm very excited of the four uh, companies that will be pitching next. So without further ado, I would like to move on uh, to the pitching part of uh, today's session. So how this will work is that we have uh, four companies, each of which will give around six minute pitches. And uh, then we will have a Q&A after each of the company presentations. So already doing the presentation, uh, please don't hesitate to use the Q&A button uh, that you can see from the toolbar, uh, which is um, either at the bottom or at the top of your screen. And uh, we will pick uh, some of your questions um, after the company uh, presentations. But without further ado, it is my um, pleasure to introduce you uh, to uh, the CEO of Celex. Uh, Celex develops a method and research tool uh, for gene expression sequencing directly from tissue or cell slides with spatial XY coordinates and single cell resolution. Uh, Ms. Patti Savalainen, uh, please, uh, the stage is yours. Thank you. And I'm extremely pleased that, that uh, we were selected for this pitch. And I'm happy to tell about uh, tell you about this. So I'll just put into this one. Okay. So we are, uh, our name comes from single cell X, the cell X. And so we, as Nicholas said, we are sequencing single cells and the gene expression directly from the tissue with XY coordinated way. And I'm the CEO. And of, of, of the company. And so uh, single cell analytics has been revolutionary in the past few years because it really enables the, the, the profiling of all the thousands of genes of, uh, uh, in, in, from every single cell separately and to do that from thousands or tens of thousands of cells at the same time in high throughput manner. So, uh, uh, from the latest technologies has been focused on, on the suspension cells and droplet technologies, but now the focus has turned to, to do that directly from the tissue so that the original positions of the cells uh, and data about that, that will remain. And that is where we are also heading with our CellX tissue slides. And, uh, but we can also do this for, for suspension cells, for cytospint cells or cell smears on the slides equally well uh, compared to the prior, prior sections that we also used. So um, we are truly outperforming in many ways compared to the competitors. We, we are truly spatial and we are truly single cell resolution because we can do, do, go down to the, the, the pixel size of, of, of uh, 10 micrometers, the cell size. The throughput uh, is very high. And we do, uh, provide sequence data of the whole transcriptome, not just the, the specific gene sets. And because of the high throughput, the price per cell is very low and competitive. We don't require any special instruments and, and our methods also enable one to do very cost efficient sample archiving before the, the expensive sequencing step. Uh, so our innovation is the, the barcoding, what we do for the uh, CellX uh, uh, RNA capture chips with XY coordinates. That is still our trade secret until we get the patent, but simply the, the chip is capturing uh, the, the lysed uh, cells and RNAs from them directly from the tissue slide or the cytospin or, or cell smear slide. And then we sequence that and, and later from the data, we track back the, the original XY coordinates. And the data uh, for, uh, is matched then with the image uh, of the tissue. And the data will be very, uh, very deep because there is uh, X, Y, and, and Z layers for all the genes detected. So, so we develop also image and data analysis software. And, and we definitely need AI uh, in the, with this deep data. Uh, later on, we also uh, uh, search for uh, research, uh, reagent uh, kit partners and, and uh, microscope scanner partners to, to make a full product family out of this. So our main customers will be uh, academic researchers, pharma and diagnostics R&D. And for them, we will provide a research tool to study the cell types and interactions and, and uh, uh, cell functions, both in healthy uh, tissues and, and different diseases. And this enables our customers to find new drug targets and also new biomarkers for diseases and, and diagnostics uh, use and also to monitor the drug responses. 
the single cell markets are heavily increasing. At the moment, the market size is two billion dollars, uh, and uh, it increases annually uh, about seventeen percent. And there are special needs in cancer and immunology because every cell in cancer and immunology in, in the lymphocytes are quite unique because the cancer cells mutate a lot and immune cells have their unique antigen receptors. So the single cell resolution is really crucial for these studies. And therefore, we, are, we were ha very happy to be selected and funded by Business Finland in, in a, a one very big 10 million euro consortium of co-innovation consortium called Cancer IO for cancer immuno-oncology. This is almost 30 uh, partner uh, uh, two-year uh, program with both academic cancer researchers and, and lots of pharma companies and uh, other startups uh, from, from Finland. And we are basing our RFD and piloting studies now for the fo with the fo strong focus on cancer immunology. Uh, we have secured about 1 million euro funding uh, to do the RFD, and this is our roadmap. So, so we aim to be in the service sales already next year uh, with our beta version of the chip and the, the, the software. And uh, next year we will pilot uh, the method heavily and, and provide that as a service for, for the cancer researchers in the, in the consortium. Then in 2022, we hope to be ready with the full, full uh, software and reagent kit and imaging uh, systems for our chips and and uh, and enter the product sales in global markets, and then after that we are also aiming to do customers panels for for example a set of cancer genes instead of the whole transcriptome, and and uh, what we are seeking from Japanese markets and partners. We, we are very happy to provide also the piloting um, opportunity next year. And then later on, when our whole product family is in market, uh, we of course hope to get customers from Japan as well. And now in the, in the later phase, uh, stages, uh, we, we are also seeking for tech partners, for example, for the uh, mass, mass manufacturing of the chips and uh, optimizing their, their design and also microscope scanners, reagents, AI solutions for our technology. And uh, this is our board. I'm the CEO. I also read, uh, lead a, a research group at the university. I'm a cell biologist and genetist by my, from my background. I have a board members, uh, uh, Scotty Bicken and Hannes Lohi, who are, are very uh, uh, experts in, in the biotech uh, startup world. And in our team, we have uh, in R&D, we have a four postdoc level researchers who are experts in the wet lab of signal cell analytics, bioinformatics, and, and chip design and manufacturing. And uh, here I will end and, and thank you for your attention. I'm happy to take some questions. Thank you. Well, thank you, Paidi, uh, for the very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, we have some questions in the Q&A, and if you have any more, please feel free to keep them uh, going. Uh, one of the questions we have to Salex, um, what cancers are you targeting? Uh, there are now quite many uh, in the, uh, there are quite many cancers in the pipeline of our pilot customers. Uh, uh, mainly breast cancer, kidney cancer. Those are the, the main targets in our academic uh, uh, cancer researchers in the cancer IO. But, but there are also some drug companies uh, involved uh, in, in, the, in, in this consortium who have uh, uh, drug candidates for, for many other cancers. And, and, and I, I don't even know all, the, all their details of their production lines, but, but uh, at least in the, from the academic uh, side, I mean, they have uh, lots, of, lots of background in the breast cancer. Thank you for uh, the answer. Um, we have another question. Um, how do you see applications in neuroimmunology, uh, CNS area, et cetera? Yeah, I mean, of course, that's uh, signals of studies have been done a lot in, 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 in brain research. Uh, and uh, um, uh, the, uh, of course, in, I mean, basically our methods would work for, for any tissue. So wherever you get uh, cryosections, uh, and uh, and you want to study them in single cell resolution. So so it's definitely there are this is possible to use for many. Also, some uh, we have had some interest from some some academic researchers who have who are working on 
uh, the uh, central nervous fluid cells uh, in different neuroimmunological conditions, MS disease and, and others, because the cell numbers are really small there and they are seeking for single cell opportunities. So for that, that our cytospin slides might be the good way to, to really get the single cell uh, data from, from the tiny, tiny numbers of cells. Thank you. Uh, we have one more question. Um, I can answer the later half of it, which is how can we uh, be in contact? Uh, just to let everyone know that we will also send an inquiry form to all the participants after today's uh, uh, presentation, so we can facilitate those contacts. But the first half of the question is if, if you have any distributors uh, in Japan already or any other com no, conversations? We don't yet? Yeah, we don't have any any distributors yet because we are now focusing on, on kind of local service and piloting star yet. So we are not selling yet, but but definitely at some point we would love to have distributors in Japan. So please, please, uh, I would be very pleased to to find some via you. Okay. Uh, well, thank you, Patty, so much uh, for your wonderful presentation, and uh, very much looking forward to these piloting opportunities and and perhaps tech partners uh, in Japan as you presented. Uh, thank you for being with us uh, today. And uh, next, I would like thank to you. introduce you uh, the CEO and co-founder of Startups, uh, Mr. Daniel Petrini. Startups uh, develops a digital health platform for neurological disorders such as Parkinson's uh, using state-of-the-art mathematical modeling of symptoms and AI optimizing of various treatments. Uh, Daniel, the digital stage would be yours. Thank you very much, Niklas. Hello, my name is Daniel Petrini and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Startups. And I'm going to present our digital health platform for neurological disorders. Uh, and we have a special attention and focus to Parkinson's disease. This is our vision for an equal, optimized and cost reducing care because Parkinson's is a terrible disease. And this uh, project and company is a joint venture between Uppsala University and Uppsala University Hospital. Okay, so <clears throat> the problems with Parkinson's, it's a complex disease. We don't know the root cause of it, and there is no cure in sight. Uh, a lot of uh, doctors we're talking to, they expect it to be at least 50 years away. Uh, and the real problem, there is an absence of biomarkers, how much Parkinson you have. There's no blood sample to take. And also that the therapeutic window is narrowing as the pro disease progresses. This leads to that the care is very subjective. It's unequal and it's very costly. In the US, it costs $55 billion and the corresponding uh, figures for EU is $20, $25 billion. Okay, so what is our solution? It's a cloud-based digital health platform and it composes of two legs. One is the symptom quantification. So we want to get a number of how much Parkinson you have. That is done by mathematical modeling. It's been five years of R&D at the university. And given that we have those quantification, progressive markers, how much Parkinson do you have right now? We can offer individualized AI power treatment suggestions. And here's a schematic of, of how our cloud service works. So essentially, the patient uploads data in various forms, and I'll get that into that later. Uh, it saves into our database, and um, then the mathematical modeling comes in. And this is the deep tech, uh, our unique selling points. And given uh, that we do get good uh, symptom quantification, uh, we can offer that to the neurological or the doctor, and he can offer reports and analysis suggestions and also fine tuning of, for example, the best signals. Okay, so here comes a little bit more. Um, so essentially, what is it? It's a portal. It composes of a dashboard and statistics of the progress of the disease. It allows for remote care. And uh, the screenshot here is actually a diabetes application. My son has diabetes type one and it was actually from that uh, we got the idea to make the corresponding digital health platform for Parkinson's disease. So we can monitor his blood sugar, get very good statistics, uh, upload the insulin levels, etc. And uh, we have uh, weekly contacts with the hospital. 
to get this uh, diabetes under control. Uh, so we plan to use these progressive markers, the tremor, that's a, a no brainer for Parkinson's. So we have wearables and mobile phones and we take sensor upload data and then we model tremor, how much tremor do you have? Another progressive marker is an eye movement, the ability to follow a dot on the screen. Uh, and we use eye trackers for that, for example, from Toby. And in conjunction with the self-assessment, how do you feel in your disease right now? We can have a very accurate picture of, of your Parkinson's disease. We also have four or five more candidates in the pipeline, but we start with these three. And also uh, we have the pre-op and post-op images of if you're using DBS signal. So we can segment the brain and then we can optimize the DBS signal. And that is the treatment suggestion. Besides the deep brain signal, signal optimization, we have levodopa administration. Uh, how much levodopa are you gonna take right now? It can be in micro tablets or in the intestines pump. And this is the management team. It's me, Daniel, and um, Hanno Lindroth. He's the chairman of the board. He has 40 years of life science experience and also Christopher Kennedy. We have a small business, a small uh, location in the Boston in the US and he's head of business development over there. And he's very well connected into the pharma industry and medtech industry, mass bio. And he talks with Abby, et cetera. Um, but the star of this management team is Alexander Medvedev. He's the main inventor and scientist in the mathematical modeling. But we also, we want to do this platform together with the healthcare sector. So we have Doug Niholm and it's a leading Parkinson expert in, in the Europe. So he provides us with all the clinical tests and how to conduct them and as a resource. And our business model is license-based, is flexible and scalable. Uh, the primary business model is as a solution directly to the clinic. But we also plan to license out our database or modeling to pharmaceutical and medtech companies that want to improve or develop new drugs or devices. And also to offer the platform as a full service. We plan to employ team of uh, world-leading neuro <laughs> neurologists um, and offer the service uh, to remote distance, for example, where there is no university hospital. And also to uh, collaborate with other digital health companies, developing other models, or we can license their data, etc. And also as a uh, clinical test aid service. For example, if you're gonna develop a new drug uh, how are you going to perform that clinical test to be the gold standard of Parkinson's care? And our needs, why am I here pitching today? We're looking for an additional investment in the range of two, one to two million dollars. And also we want more partnerships and collaborations to, to the ones that we already have, for example, in Japan. Um, we also we want to expand our clinical tests and do it in other locations so we don't have too much bias in our, in our signal. Uh, so that's why I'm here today. If you have any questions, please contact me. Okay. Uh, thank you, Daniel, uh, for your presentation. And indeed, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to use the uh, Q&A button that you can find. Thank you, button. And uh, we have a couple of questions here. Uh, one question, um, can your service slow the progression of the disease? Excuse me, can you repeat the question, please? Yes, uh, can your service slow the progression um, of the disease? No, well, no, I don't think so, but we can make life easier, the quality of life better, better actually. And in some sense, we can slow it in, because if we reach the uh, therapeutic window better, that could lead to a slower of the disease, but that's not the main target here. It's to have a better quality of life. Thank you. Um, can you address other indications in neuroscience? Do you have any plans or do you just focus on Parkinson? 
we're focused on Parkinson's, but we have uh, in our pipeline, we are thinking about expanding to Alzheimer's and our mathematical modeling is, we have strong indication that it will work on other disorders as well. So. But we'll start with Parkinson's. We have much more clinical data on Parkinson's. Thank you. Uh, one more question uh, regarding uh, markers. Um, are you talking about biomarkers or digital marker, uh, digital biomarkers or both? And uh, what, what is the maturity of your biomarkers? No, uh, we're just talking about the digital markers, uh, progressive markers. So we don't, we don't take any blood samples or anything like that. It's just your, the pattern of how, for example, how you move or the, uh, your eye movements, the blink rates, the ability to write on a keyboard, uh, common errors written on the keyboard, stuff like that. Thank you. And a continuation to that question, uh, what kind of feedback or what kind of results um, have you received uh, so far uh, from the markers that you are tracking? On the market? Uh, from the markers that, that you just mentioned. Oh, oh the markers. Um, it's actually pretty good. Uh, the problems with Parkinson's and progressive markers to have the, the ground truth, uh, <clears throat> since there is no ground truth. But we have done a lot of tests um, from clean patients up to very severe Parkinson's patients, and there's a linearity in the data signal, and it corresponds well with the patients and the healthcare providers as well. So. Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you, Daniel, uh, for your presentation and answering the questions from the audience. And uh, indeed, if you would like to uh, get in touch uh, with Stardust or Daniel, uh, you can fill in the inquiry form after the event and we will facilitate uh, these uh, introductions. Uh, but thank you, Daniel, so much for being part of, of our uh, program today. Thank you, my pleasure. Thank you. And uh, next, I would like to introduce our third company uh, for today, uh, Fin Advance. Uh, Fin Advance is developing microfluidic organ on chips uh, for pharmaceutical drug research and development. It's my pleasure to introduce you to the CEO, CEO of Fin Advance, uh, Mr. Pratik uh, Singh. Uh, Pratik, do we have you um, here? Thank you, Nicholas. And uh... Thank you to Nordic Innovation House for providing us with this uh, opportunity. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Today I will talk about uh, what we are doing in Finland and how our technology are, technologies are helping to replicate human biology in vitro. The company, uh, the, our startup was founded two years ago in December 2018 out of a uh, EU project as a one-man company, and now it's a 10-person company with three research sites. Uh, our vision is to accelerate drug research and development while keeping as little amount of animals as possible using organ on chips, and we are going towards a fully automated biotechnology 2.0. And we use a lot of different hybrid technologies for this, everything from including bioprinting to single cell uh, isolation and culture to automated microfluidics. And uh, the way we are using this is to help in the traditional drug R&D workflow, where you typically start with the in vitro work, which translates successfully to animal models, but fails more than 90% of the time in human models, because of the simple fact that animal models are not human models. What we do is we start from the in vitro research and develop the organ on chips using microfluidic uh, chips where we work with human cells or human derived cells. And these results are very much translatable to human biology because simply put human organs are, organ on chips are relevant as human models. I will give a few examples of use cases where our models are being used. In a typical tissue engineering, you would like to go from this 2D culture to a more advanced, uh, fully luminized capillary network. The problem here is that it is difficult to quantify and difficult to see the geometrical changes or the drug absorption in these vessels. What we do is we start with the computational modeling. For example, here we are trying to study the vascular anomaly. We have done similar work for retinopathy and different vascular disorders. We develop a microfluidic model and then we prove that model with the, uh, with the wild type and mutant cell cultures. And what you end up is a fully vascularized and luminized vessel. This 
was uh, this has awarded us with a very generous three-year EU grant, where we have shown that in our organ on chips we can really differentiate between a healthy and a tie to mutated vascular network, and the differences are spectacular. But we didn't stop here. Unlike conventional microfluidic chips, our platforms are high throughput compatible, and this gives you 96 or 384 well played format vascularized channels, which in turn allows you to study individual mutations or individual patient samples. With our technology, you can go from your academic model and surpass the conventional ECM or 3D printed biomodels with no organized uh, vessel network to a fully quantifiable luminized vessels. Similarly, we have also developed platforms for organoid cultures under flow. Uh, these platforms, all of our platforms are high content screenable and they are compatible with any well played format. You get very uniform spheroids and these spheroids are then being used for immuno-oncological studies. Our users have successfully vascularized renal and prostate cancer organoids and now are studying immune cell infiltration in these organoids. Our organoids, uh, our, our platform also allows for studying patient-derived organoids, uh, starting from a single cell organoid generation, all the way to doing organoid cultures under flow for more than four weeks. Our platforms are also being used for studying COVID-19, and this is a modification of our blood-brain barrier on a chip. Here, the blood-brain barrier is fully perfused in the 380 fill for well played format and it is maintained fully automated. Our technology is based on well known organ on chips, even though it's a, a five to 10 year young technology, but the cost reduction to a typical pharma process is estimated to be more than 25%. We have some partners in Japan who are willing to work with us and what we are looking today is for additional pharma and academic partners who would like to investigate their in vitro models and make it into more organotypic models. Our platforms are fully tubing free and you do not need anything other than your conventional incubator. This wouldn't have been possible without my highly diverse team. We are a team of engineers, medical professionals and postdocs. We have been very successful in partnering with some of the European pharmaceutical companies and a wide range of academic partners. If this is something which interests you, please contact me after this presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Pratik, for your presentation. Uh, Kitos, a success on your, your slides. Um, we have a question from the audience. Um, what is a special feature of your technology among many organ on a chip models? What makes it special? We, our platform is very high throughput uh, compatible. So we have been using liquid handling robots for doing cell loading to imaging. So it's a, uh, we, for the end user, it's, it's completely platform independent. You do not need any pumping systems or any tubing connectors. So we try to make it as a ready to use organ on chip platform. Yeah. Thank you, Pratik. Uh, we have another question uh, regarding the stage of your company. Uh, where are you commercially? Are you going to market or still need to do more R&D? For some of the models, we are still doing uh, quite a lot of R&D, like bone on a chip, but for vascular and for blood brain barrier, we are already going to market. So we have had customers, for example, for COVID-19 application, we have made the nasal and endothelial barrier, which has been commercialized successfully. So those platforms, we are able to provide them as of today. Thank you. Uh, maybe if I can continue from that, if you can just elaborate a little bit on your uh, business models and how do you see the revenue creation um, in the future? Yeah, we start with a feasibility study and uh, with any partner, academic or pharma, and we develop the platform which is customized to their assay. And depending on the throughput, what they are looking for, you, do not, you just have to provide us with the instruments and the facilities what you have, and the platform will be adjusted to that. And then we do a pilot study, which is uh, three to six months, and you test 
our platform 100 2000 plates let's say at your at your end and then we license the design out to you yeah okay uh, thank you so much uh, project for your answers and for your presentation uh, it's very Thanks, uh, exciting innovations uh, coming from finland uh, next, I would like to introduce already uh, the fourth and the final uh, pitching company for today, Cellink. Uh, Cellink uh, provides uh, technologies and services uh, to create, understand and master cell and molecular biology with a focus on bioprinting, analysis, liquid handling and uh, bioprocessing. It's my um, honor to introduce you the sales director for Asia Pacific uh, for Cellink, uh, Ms. Tomoko Fulund. Tomoko-san, uh, please uh, feel free to get started. Thank you very much. Oh, oops. Okay. So, hello, everyone. And uh, thank you very much. I would like to thank Innovation, uh, Nordic Innovation House and Shona IPAC for having me and selling to this uh, wonderful event. My name is Tomoko. I work with a commercial operation for Asia Pacific Legion at the Swedish biotechnology company called Selink. So I'm very excited to introduce our company and technology today. So, excuse me, I'm just gonna, yep. Our mission is to bring the technology for changing the future of medicine. Selink is born as a world first bioing company in Gothenburg back in 2016. Company is, uh, you know, just a little less than five years old. But during this time, we have grown from bioing company to bioprinting company who can also offer the system and now entering our feet in becoming life science company. Our existence is over 60 countries with 10 offices around the world. We actually opened the office in Japan this year and we have over 330 global team members. And I'm very proud to say that our technology is used in over 1,800 labs around the world. So how can we change the future of medicine? As uh, I listed up some, uh, some of the significant challenges in medicine today, uh, such as long years of journey to develop new drugs, organ shortage for transplantations, and overused of the animal testing for both pharmaceutical and cosmetics products development. Selling's vision is to create the future of medicine with 3D bioprinting, with, uh, which could provide a solution to the mentioned challenges. So what is 3D bioprinting? 3D bioprinting is layer by layer biofabrication method and mixing cells, human cells, for instance, in bio ink made of biomaterial such as gelatin or collagen and create bottoms up structure and culture cells in three dimensional environment to create human tissues and organ models. So with this technology, there is enormous potential to create um, increased efficiency, for instance, within drug discovery workflows. I believe today's audiences are mainly from pharmaceutical industry. So I mentioned this application today. So perhaps the most time consuming and costly process of drug development entails assay development, preclinical studies in animal models, and finally followed by human clinical trials. So these lengthy and greatly involved steps that researchers have to navigate major obstacles that continue to drive up cost and reduce the number of drugs to deliver to the market and patients. So we, uh, with improved cellular behavior bioprinting has the potential to alleviate several problems within this stage. As such, providing pharmaceutical researchers with significant cost and time saving and most importantly, we can deliver the new treatment to the patient at earlier timing to improve their quality of life. As 3D bioprinting 
can fabricate the organ and tissue model in very details. This technology can be utilized in a various applications. So um, not only for the drug de development, but also for cosmetics testing, personalized medicine development, and cell therapy development, medical device development, et cetera, et cetera. So um, as you can see, the applications are very versatile. At Cellink, we have solution know-how to enable scientists to implement this technology into research and development. I would also like to mention here that uh, to drive the challenge towers to 3D bioprinting and 3D cell culture, Cellink has developed cutting edge products portfolio, which can offer a diverse range of applications from bulk tissue printing all the way to single cell genomics. What we are looking for in Japan is collaboration and partnership who can utilize our technology to accelerate such research and development. We see amazing researchers and uh, companies in Japan uh, with excellent knowledge and skills. And uh, please reach out to me if you can find any synergy in working with us. I would also like to mention that we have a wonderful team located in Japan office. So we can also offer localized support. If you are interested in having a closer look at our technology and equipment, uh, we are happy to you know, arrange the online or on-site demonstration. So that's also available. Last but not least, we are offering the platform for our customer and community to share knowledge and experience it to each other. I would like to invite you all for our upcoming exciting webinar and conferences. And uh, this one in particular is in next week. We are inviting Professor Shoji Takeuchi from Tokyo Universities, and he will be sharing his cutting edge biofabrication research. And this one is the one for next month. We are inviting global audiences to, uh, to exchange their research and achievement within the partnership conference. So, uh, with this, I would like to thank you for today's opportunity and looking forward to having further discussion. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Tomoko-san, for your exciting presentation. Uh, it's been remarkable growth for you and, and uh, very you. exciting to hear about all the clients around the world and, of course, uh, your Japan expansion as well. Uh, we have a question in terms of support. Um, how long do you provide support if we purchase uh, your product? So um, we, how long you mean like uh, the technology I, I understood. So we, one of the things that uh, we value is the collaboration with our customers. So we have a large team members to support both scientific and engineering support. And uh, you, uh, as a customer, you have an option to uh, sign up for our service package to have a you know, life links of the support with uh, from us. Okay, uh, thank you. Another question, uh, from what functions are your typical customers in pharma? Are they R&D or are there any specific therapeutic areas that uh, your clients are typically from? Very great questions. So as I mentioned, the applications are quite versatile, but some of the uh, pharmaceutical Customers are utilizing to develop, for example, the personalized medicine uh, research. For instance, that uh, you can actually, the, the one that is growing application is the cancer research. So you can take the patient driven tumor, uh, the cancer cells from the patient and can create the tumor model to test the different types of the drugs and treatment. And uh, that's what I see a uh, growing trends uh, in use of our technology in pharmaceutical industry. So r and Thank you for, for the answer. Uh, we have another question regarding uh, your competitive advantages and strengths. Um, what is the strength of your bioprinting compared to organ on a chip or organoids? So it's a flexibility. So um, as you have the full flexibility to choose from the various bio inks, so which allows you to work with the different types of the cells. 
And the beauty of the 3D bioprinting is you can make any shape as possible. So um, that gives you a, I say it so many times, but it's versatile and flexibility is the um, strength and strength, strong point uh, of our technology offering. Thank you. Uh, one last question. Are you looking to raise more funding? We are always, <laughs> as, uh, as you can see from our growth, that uh, we have been running our strategic M&A uh, um, acquisition to grow our companies. And we, we are, of course, are looking for the funding to enable us to grow even further. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Tomoko-san, for answering the questions and your presentation. And we can also send the links to these events that you mentioned um, in our follow-up note to the audience, so they will thank learn more. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you so much. And uh, with that, uh, I would like to just continue to say a few last words. Uh, thank you so much uh, to all of our, our pitching companies uh, today. A uh, fantastic uh, variety of different uh, Nordic uh, innovations. And, and also, I would like to say a warm uh, thank you to our collaboration partners, the Shonan Health Innovation Park, as well as Takeda Nordic Innovation um, Hub. Uh, for the next steps, uh, we will send over um, an inquiry form where you can fill in and, and we will facilitate those connections to the companies that you are interested in, in discussing more. And uh, we will also send over the recording of this video so you can uh, take your time and then go through the slides and, and go into the details and the data and, and uh, reply to our form afterwards, as well as also a general feedback form so that we can improve our uh, events in the future. Uh, on my behalf, thank you so much uh, for joining the webinar. Um, also, special thanks to Yuri Okiso and Hannes Toivanen. Uh, Yuri, would you like to say something uh, from Shonan I Park uh, to our audience? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, Nicholas, uh, thank you for your great support. Hope uh, this event uh, was a productive webinar for all of the attendees and the presenters. And uh, as uh, Toshio mentioned earlier, uh, in iPark, there are more than 100 companies, uh, most, mo mostly Japanese companies. So if you're interested in joining our community, please uh, feel free to contact me. Uh, thank you again for joining us. Thank you so much, Yuri. And uh, with that, I would like to uh, conclude the event for today. We will just uh, leave this slide open, uh, but there will be no more content and we will send you over the uh, thank you email with all the items mentioned. A uh, special thank you to all of our pitching uh, companies uh, for today. And uh, thank you everyone for joining us. And um, please uh, do join us next time as well. Thank you and have a great continuation. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.